When purchasing raw materials or goods that you will be selling to customers, it is important to track your costs for planning and accounting. Determine how you want to organize your inventory control accounting and assign your purchasing cost of each item, even by specific vendor pricing. Then creating and posting transactions will use these costs to maintain your inventory on hand values. There is some initial configuration in order to prepare your inventory for proper accounting. In company settings and in the general ledger area, there is a special account for determining the standard inventory asset account. Purchases or other transactions that increase inventory will debit this account, and sales and other transactions that decrease inventory will credit this account. Another special account is the cost of goods sold expense account, posted to with debit amounts when items are sold. It is possible to maintain multiple inventory control and cost of goods sold accounts if you need to keep certain costs separate for tracking or reporting. And if in your ledger accounts you reserve a segment for location code values, you can create multiple accounts that use the same account number but different location segments for separation. When inventory items are sold, there is another setting for how costs are determined for the cost of goods sold account. From the inventory area, and the cost method setting. You can choose average cost, which will assign the calculated unit cost of each item to sales from the total amount spent on all items currently in stock and on hand. Or you can choose first in first out costing, which will assign costs to sales based on the oldest receipt of inventory, which could be different across purchases, when you need to know the exact cost of the specific item you're selling, not just an average. Inventory control and cost of sales accounts are assigned to items using sales departments. Create one or more sales department records for each combination of base accounts you want to post to. And you don't have to configure location segments here, as this will be handled by transaction posting. When editing an inventory item, on the Details tab, the Sales Department code is assigned here, to set the inventory control and cost of goods sold accounts. At the right are three different unit cost values for average, current, and standard costs. The average cost is for the stock actually on hand and cannot be edited when the on-hand quantity is not zero. The current cost is the value that will be used as the default unit cost when creating new purchases and will include freight, duty, or any other additional costs that get included in the item landed cost. The standard cost is a place where you might want to save the typical purchase unit cost, exclusive of landed cost amounts. Each cost has an associated margin calculated from the standard item price to assist you in determining what price you should be charging your customers in order to reach a desired or required sales margin. If you could purchase this item from multiple vendors, or even if you have a primary vendor assigned to this item, you can configure vendor prices to set special purchase costs. For each vendor price record, you can store not only the unit cost, but also if this cost is only available within a specified date range, or if there is a minimum quantity you have to purchase in order to get that cost. A vendor price can be used as the default purchase cost that excludes any freight or duty that is included in the item landed cost within the average cost. Vendor prices can be maintained manually or through import vendor prices. There are some other inventory item settings that can affect the cost of goods. If an item is configured to use either serial or lot numbers, and if the inventory company setting for use serial lot number costing is enabled, then the cost of goods sold amount will come from the unit cost on the serial or lot number instead of the average or FIFO cost. If an item is configured as kitted, then on the Kit Components tab, there is a field to display the current component cost, summing the extended current cost of all components. This will help you to know what the total cost of goods sold would be when this kitted item is invoiced from a sales order and all items in the kit are included without modifications. If an item is configured as manufactured, then on the Bill of Materials tab, or from a production template, the component unit and extended costs will be used to determine the built cost of this item. There are other considerations that occur during the timing within production.
The module that most uses inventory item costs is the purchases module. When you add a new item to a purchase order, the default unit cost will be the item current cost, unless you have defined a vendor price for this item and this vendor. Not only can you edit the unit cost on the purchase detail if a new value is required, but you can also edit the extended cost and recalculate the unit cost from that. If you include either freight and duty amounts with this item, then these will be included in the received cost, as will the vendor freight amount if you enable the company setting to do this. Additionally, if the item purchase is taxable, you can configure the associated tax jurisdiction to include tax in PO landed cost, typically only when the tax is non-recoverable. When the item receipt is posted, the unit cost, along with any associated landed costs, will update the item current cost. The average cost will also be recalculated based on the new quantity received and total cost. Any vendor price record will remain unchanged. For the ledger transaction, receiving an item will debit the inventory control account, either the base account or with a location segment if it already exists. If the original quantity on hand happened to be negative and the received unit of cost is different than the average cost, then the net amount difference will be posted to cost of goods sold account, so that inventory control account will remain balanced with the value of the stock on hand. When you create a requisition for an item, the default unit cost is the item current cost. You can edit the unit cost if you know it will be different, though this change is effectively ignored for manufactured items requisitioned to production orders. Processing this requisition will use the unit costs here to populate the respective unit costs on the new purchase order details. When you create a production order for an item, the unit and extended costs are calculated from all the components and cannot be edited manually. You can edit the unit cost of any component, which would in turn recalculate the cost of the produced item. Building this production order will write the unit cost from here to the current cost of the produced item. For the ledger transaction, the build will debit the inventory control account, either the base account or with a location segment if it already exists. Other transactions have the potential to edit and update item costs. For inventory adjustments, items will default the unit cost from the average cost and can be edited if desired though typically you wouldn't do this, to keep inventory accounting in balance, and only for positive quantity adjustments and not for negative. Changes to unit costs will only update the item current cost after posting an adjustment if a company setting to do this is enabled. Posting adjustments will update the ledger inventory base account, or an account with a location segment if it already exists. Similarly, for inventory transfer transactions, the unit cost is editable if desired, but you typically wouldn't need to do this. Changes to unit costs would only update the destination item current cost after posting a transfer if a company setting to do this is enabled. The ledger inventory account will only be updated if you include an additional markup amount or include a freight amount when the company setting to include vendor freight in landed cost is enabled or you choose different locations and the accounts have location segments. It is not possible to make any changes to unit costs for items. The only thing that is affected for costs is when the counted quantity is different than the expected quantity and posting the count will update the ledger inventory base account with the calculated difference or an account with a location segment if it already exists. On sales orders, the cost amounts on inventory details can be edited if user security allows, but typically you wouldn't do this to keep inventory accounting in balance. If the item has a matching price matrix record that uses a contract cost, this amount will override the average cost for the order detail. There's a company setting to use cost amounts for non-physical items on orders, or instead use zero cost. Posting an invoice will credit the ledger inventory account and debit the cost of sales account for each item, either base accounts or accounts with a location segment if they already exist.
If you would like more information about Spire Accounting, access the link in the description below to our homepage. Read the online manual help for additional assistance. Watch more videos from this playlist. And subscribe to the Spire YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.